So we will make a start. Uh, so thank you for joining this EFL online workshop. Today we're going to be focusing on creating a PLG. And a PLG is a framework with a set of individualized outcomes for one learner. And PLG just stands for Personal Learning Goals. Uh, today we're going to look at how you can create a PLG using it. First of all, we're going to create a template. And then we're going to actually use the template to create a PLG. And we're going to do that using the web console. Uh, please can I just ask that everyone remains muted during the demonstration section of the webinar. There will be a question and answer session towards the end. So if you do have any questions, if you just make a quick note of them as we go through. And then at the end of the session, join the question and answer. I'll invite you to unmute yourselves and ask any questions. And I'll try and answer them the best I can. So let's have a look at what we're going to focus on today. So we're going to start off by looking at what is a PLG, uh, as well as some examples of the ways different schools have structured their PLGs. Some schools choose to also track progress and add a continuum. So I'll be able to signpost you to where you can find further information on how you can create a continuum to you to track progress against items within the PLG at your school. We'll then look at creating a template using a PLG, sorry, creating a template for to be used for a PLG. We'll then use the template to actually create a PLG. We'll then add the PLG framework onto a device and show you how you then can link evidence to it. And then a PLG is two things. So it's a framework with a set of individualized outcomes for one learner, and it's automatically also an assessment book. So we'll then look at the assessment section of a PLG where we can see the evidence being pulled through. And if you want to, where you can make assessment judgments. And we'll look at that on the app and we'll also that look at that on the web console. And then finally, we'll finish off with a question and answer session. So again, if you just remain muted, join the demonstration sections, and then at the end, join the question and answer. I'll be very happy to answer any questions that you have. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen while we get set up. So first of all, I just want to explore what is a PLG. And I've actually taken us to the, uh, oh, let me stop showing that for a second, sorry. Just want to be able to include shared sound when I'm showing the video. So I'm just to pick that and pick this. So hopefully you'll see that I've navigated to the web console and the web console has a lot of guides and videos uh, for you to be able to look at in your own time. The web address for that is resources evidenceforlearning.net. So I'm going to scroll down and we're going to go down to individualized outcomes, EHCP and personal learning goals. And the first section here is about what is a PLG. And this video also gives some examples of how different schools have structured their PLGs at their school. So I'm going to play that video for us now. This video is for anyone that is interested in capturing learning, recording evidence, and or any observational data, as well as if you choose to make assessments against any form of individualized outcomes, such as EHCPs, educational healthcare plans, or any short, mid-term or long-term learning intention or outcome that a learner is working against. So PLGs are two things. They're a special type of framework and an assessment book. The frameworks are special because they're just for one learner. So we're going to have a look at some of the examples of assessment books side of the PLGs. And this will also give you some ideas on how you can structure the framework for your individual learners. So the first one we're going to tap into is this one here for Harry Wolf. So this is the assessment book part of the PLG. And an assessment book is a way to look at your framework and see all the information that's been collected against each of the learning goals. This one's quite a simple one. They've got the long term outcomes from the EHCP at the top. And then they've added in the shorter term outcomes below. This shows you how much evidence has been collected against each of the learning outcomes. And you also have the added option to make the learning outcomes accessible. And that's what this school's chosen to do. So to make a professional judgment, you can tap on the dotted box to the right of the outcome. And you can create your own assessment aspects and schemas, which is essentially the continuum that you want to use to assess a learning outcome. So in this second example, 
It's actually for the same learner at the same school, as they chose to create a separate PLG, one for the EHCP, which we just looked at, and this one for the terminally learning outcomes and intentions. You can see they've customised the headings, and they've also chose to use a different continuum for this particular PLG. You can also tap in the history column to be able to see all historical judgments that's been made against that particular learning outcome. And you can also make professional statements against each learning outcome. And this is a space provided so that teachers or SLT are able to write summary reports or moderation comments against each of the outcomes. And that can be done here. The framework items within a PLG can be easily adapted and evolved over time so it can follow a learner through their entire journey throughout the school if you choose to. To help manage this process, you can very quickly set up and change the views so that you're only viewing the framework items that you want to see at that particular time. So over the next two examples, we're going to look at how you, within one school, you can have different templates for different learning pathways. So this is an example of a learner following a semi-formal pathway, and this school chose to assess using MAP. You can see they've used baselines and expected outcomes, to manage and monitor assessment over time. This is for a learner at the same school following a pre-formal pathway and they've customised their headings to be different. So in this example we're going to look at a popular way that many schools have chosen to structure their PLGs. They've taken the long-term targets from the HCP as well as the shorter term targets and this also allows the class teacher to when they're ready to, to add in the terminally learning intentions or the smaller steps as and when they're going to be working on them. In each case, the framework is used to capture evidence as other frameworks are. And the PLGs are a great way for reviewing and preparing for annual review meetings or parental meetings, or for teachers just to review progress and to plan future teaching. Just to point out, this percentage figure is coming from the Insights for Learning app. This final example is modelled on a specialist resource base attached to a mainstream school. So they use the PLG to plan and clearly show the sequence of learning for their learners. They've started with a key stage goal and broken it down into the sequence of learning as the learner works towards the longer term outcome. What's also interesting, in addition to being able to see how much evidence has been gathered against each of these outcomes, we can tap into any of them and we get a timeline of all the evidence or observational notes that's been gathered against that one learning outcome. And what that effectively gives us is case studies, both in terms of what the teachers and teaching assistants have done and the multidisciplinary team and what the parents have done and how they've worked together to support the learning and help move learning forward. It also beautifully demonstrates impact as we can tap into any of these pieces of evidence and see this as a starting point. We can then come out of that piece of evidence and we can have a look at any of these pieces of evidence and the videos attached uh, to be able to see progress made. For demonstration, we'll go to the final uh, piece of evidence or the most recent one gathered. You won't be able to hear the audio for confidential reasons, but uh, you can see that just for demonstration purposes, you can see how this demonstrates clearly the impact and the progress that a learner has made and the inputs that have gone into it. So hopefully that's given you a good overview and everything that we've given you a glimpse of today, we have comprehensive guides and videos within EFL resources. So hopefully that has given you a clear idea of what a PLG is and how they can be used. There is not a correct one way to set up and use PLGs. So schools set up the PLGs in the way that they think it's going to work for them, their learners, and the families and carers of those learners. Just going to stop that, sorry. Just going to go back to the resource center. So let me just share that screen again with you. So you can choose, if you want to, to add an assessment continuum to track progress, as we saw in some of those videos just then. So to have further information on how you can create an assessment continuum at your school, I'm just going to scroll down and within the resource centre, there's a whole section around assessment. So I'm just going to click on assessment. And there's a guide here, which is create a continuum to track progress. So I'm just going to click on that 
We've got quite a lot to cover in this on PFL online workshop. So I'm not going to play these videos, but this is a place that you can come back to to be able to watch the look at the guides and also follow the videos as you create the continuums that you want to be able to use to track progress at your school against the PLGs. What you may also do is you may create your own continuum. A number of schools also use map as an assessment tool. So we can search in the search box for map. And you just click on set up and record judgments using map. And then this specific guide will help you to be able to set up map and the four aspects of map so that then you can use that when we're creating the template to set up your PLGs. So have a look at that if you do want to build into your template a continuum to be able to use to track progress and it being map. And just earlier I showed you where you'd be able to see further information on setting up any assessment continuum at your school. So what we're now going to do is actually log into the web console where you'll be able to actually create a PLG template and then also be able to use it to be able to set up further PLGs quickly and efficiently. So let me just share that screen with you now. So hopefully everyone can see that we've now logged in to the web console. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over admin towards the top right. And I'm going to click on PLG Manager. So the first thing we're going to do is actually start to create a template to be used when we're making PLGs across the school. So I'm going to click then on Create a New PLG just here towards the top right. This PLG is more of a test PLG. So I'm just going to call this Test Blake in my case because I just want to be able to use this to actually set up the template. What I'm then also going to do is just stop sharing my screen for a moment because I've already got in a Word document a learners learning intentions, including their long targets from the EHCB, as well as their shorter term targets. So let me make sure you can be able to see this at the same time. So what we can see on the right hand side is this is for a learner called Jane Patterson. It's broken down. So I'm going to base my template around the four areas of the EHCB. So just to save myself time, I'm going to copy the headings from the right hand side. And where it says framework headings in the box here, I'm just going to paste in those headings. So right click and just say paste. So I'm structuring my PLG template around the four areas of the HCP. You can obviously add in any headings that you want. So it can be similar to this around the HCP, or there may be different headings that you want to structure your PLGs around. At a later point when we've made the template, we can then come back and use it. At the moment, we're actually setting it up. So that's why the next thing I'm going to do is just click Create at the bottom right. We're then on the PLG settings page, and we'll spend more time of this when we're actually creating a PLG. At the moment, I just want to get to the point where I can set up the template. So I'm going to go straight to click Edit PLG Items at the top right. So we can already now see that I brought across those four headings that we set when we were naming the PLG. I can then build out these to set it up for my template. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tap the plus on the right hand side to add a new item underneath the item I'm currently on. So I'm adding a new item within cognition and learning by tapping the plus. And this is where I wanna bring across my long-term target from the educational healthcare plan. You can choose to add a prefix, as I'm doing here, so it's clear that this is the EHCP. And as this is a target taken from the EHCP, as this is actually going to be a template, I'm actually going to write here, enter, and I'm just going to make, say, LT for long term here. And then when someone comes to use this, maybe one of the teachers or myself, in a moment, I will then be able to write over where it says enter LT here, and enter in James' actual long term target. But this, again, is setting up the template, first of all. So what we can see at the top right is it's currently switched on. So that means that this is an item that I currently, when I'm capturing evidence, I would be able to link evidence directly to that long-term target. You can choose to do that, and you can choose to do it, link evidence to the long-term target from the HCP. But in this example, I'm actually going to switch that off. So we're not going to link evidence directly to the long-term target from the HCP. And then I'm going to click Add at the bottom right. 
All I'm going to do to save myself time, though, just before I do, is I'm going to copy that because I'm going to repeat this within the other three sections. So I've copied that text and I just click add at the bottom right. I'm going to build out the section of cognition and learning further in a moment. But like I said, I want to add enter long term target here underneath the other three sections. So again, I just click the plus on the item above where I want to add a new item. I'm going to switch off evidence at uh, enable evidence capture and I'm just going to paste in EHCB enter LT here stands for my long term and just say add. So I'm just going to repeat that process. So again, next to SMH, press the plus, paste that in and just switch off enable evidence capture. And again, within physical and sensory, repeat the process. So, and I want to go back though, because I want to add in a space where I can enter my short term targets that are going to be directly linked to this long term target within cognition and learning. So, again, if you want to add a new item in, we tap the plus on the item above where you want to add something new. So, I tap the plus here. So, in this example, I'm going to add another prefix. So, it's just really clear. I'm just putting ST for short term. I've seen a number of other schools, they might put AUT for autumn or autumn 21, if you want to structure like that. But here I'm just putting ST, this is the short term, and I'm going to kind of type in enter ST here. I'm also choosing, because I want my members of staff to record when this short term target was set, just so I can see if a short term target's been carried on for a long period of time, I can just keep a track of it. So what I'm going to do at the end of that area is just type MM slash YY. So I'm choosing that the member staff, when they come to the, use this template, they'll enter in the short term target over the text there. And they'll also enter in the month and the year within the brackets that that target was actually set as a short term target. Again, a template can only be a template. It's not going to be perfect for all PLGs when you come to create them. So you may have to make some adjustments to it. In my school, typically, I have three short term outcomes set working towards each long term. So I'm going to copy that text and just paste it onto a new line. So you can add a number of new items at once. As long as the item is on a new line, then it will know that it's a new out item or outcome that you're adding. Again, to save myself time, I'm actually now going to copy all three of those. So when I build out the other sections, I can quickly add them in. So again, each new item is on its new line. I've enabled evidence capture is now switched on because when I'm linking evidence, I want to directly link evidence to any of these short term outcomes. So I just click add at the bottom right. And we've got our first section. So we've got cognition and learning at the top. We've got therefore where we'd enter the long term target from the EHCP. I've chosen to add three short term targets, which will be able to be entered in uh, when we're using the template. And I've also gone through why I've added a prefix at the beginning. It's your choice to think, will prefixes be useful and what prefix would? And again, it's completely optional, but I've chosen to put in the brackets at the end so I can keep track and also have it recorded when these short term targets were first of all entered onto evidence for learning. So again, to build that out now, I'm going to press the plus button to the right of EHCB, uh, the long term target within communication and language. I leave enable evidence capture switched on. And I just paste in now my short term, the three outcomes, and just say add. I'm going to repeat that process again for the other two sections. So we've now got the structure the way I want to structure the PLG template. There are various different things that you can do to be able to structure your PLGs in the way that works for you. In terms of just editing these lines, oh, there are various different buttons that we can look at together. So the plus button we've used a number of times to add a new item. If I spotted at any point there's a spelling mistake or I wanted to change the wording, I could click the pencil icon to the right, and that would change that specific item within the uh, temp uh, template, and then I could click OK. At this point, I'm just going to click cancel because I'm not going to actually edit it. 
If you wanted to duplicate an item, and we'll look at that more maybe when we're actually using the template, we could use this icon here, the duplicate icon, and that will duplicate the item, the wording of the item. This left and right arrows give structure to the framework. So I want, when I'm linking evidence to these short-term outcomes, for it directly to make reference to this longer-term outcome. And I also want it to be clear that it's within cognition and in learning area. So that's why the text sort of cascades to the right or is indented at each level. So the left and right arrow buttons do make a difference to the way the framework is structured. And the delete icon on the right hand side would delete the item. I now want to save this as a template that I can use in the future. So at the bottom left of the screen, I click save as template. And I now want to call my template, and you can obviously have different templates for different pathways if that's appropriate. But I'm going to call this EHCP Outcomes, and you can obviously name your templates as you wish. You can choose to lock the top level headings, so that means people wouldn't be able to move around the four areas of the EHCP in this case, or add new main headings. So you can either lock it, so people can't do that, or you can leave it unlocked. It's up to you what you find more useful. I have already uh, set up an assessment continuum to use, and I want to restrict it. So if anyone's adding an assessment continuum and they're using this template to create their PLG, I don't want them to make a mistake and select the different continuum that's in the system. So I am going to restrict it so that they can only select map to add to any item within the PLG. So then I just click create at the bottom right. So we've made the template. So the next step then is I've not actually want to push this PLG through to actually be a PLG. I'm actually going to leave it in the system though, so I've started to create it, just in case I want to come back and use this to build another template in the future. So I am just going to click save at the bottom right. The success message will display that at the top. And now what we're going to do is just go back to the first screen when you log into the web console. So I'm going to go back to evidence at the top left, and this is the first screen when you log into the web console that you'll get to. So we're now going to use that template to actually create a real PLG for one of my learners. So again, I hover over admin at the top right, and then I click on PLG manager. So to create a new PLG, again, we click create a new PLG. This time I actually want to name it uh, over a learner. So I'm going to call it the learner's name. Jane Patterson in this case. And again, you can call it EHCP or PLG, whatever you want to call it. Could be Jane Patterson targets. I'm actually going to call this Jane Patterson EHCP outcomes for my school. And I do want to use a template. So I'm going to click use a template. And this is the template that we've just made together today. So again, I click on the name of the template. So I've named the PLG. And the next thing then is to click on the name of the template that you want to use. If you have various templates, you just select the one you want to use to create this PLG. So I now click create. So now we've actually come to make a PLG for Jane Patterson. We'll spend a bit more time on this settings page. So we can see the name of the PLG at the top. Whoever's making the PLG is automatically the owner of the PLG. Assessment managers at a future point would be able to edit any PLG that's in the system. If teachers typically are assessment users, they can only propose changes to a PLG, maybe adding in new outcomes, if they're the owner. So whoever's creating this PLG will be automatically the owner. If it was being done centrally, you could click on the drop down arrow and select other members of staff to be the owner. But in this case, I want to be the owner. You can see the map uh, continuum is restricted. And in terms of the framework and the assessment book, we're going to leave that as it is for now. And once the, the PLG has been submitted for review and approved, we'll come back here to set these to be live so that it can be used and added onto a device. So the next part is to choose the learner. So you can start to type the learner's name and any learner who's in your cloud will come up. So you just click on the learner's name. PLGs fundamentally are for one learner. So it does make sense. You just take a moment, if you are including the learner's name in the title of the PLG, that you have selected the learner and you selected the correct learner. In terms of assessment book permissions for this PLG, 
anyone who has access to evidence for learning will be able to, once the framework is live, add the framework onto their device and capture evidence. If you want a member of staff to be able to access the assessment book, then they need, if they're an assessment user, to have specific permission to access the assessment book. If they're an assessment manager, they can automatically access all assessment books. So if I wanted to give someone else access to the assessment book who's not an assessment manager, you just click in the box and you select the member staff that you want to add or you start to type the name in. So let's say in this example, I'm gonna give access to Jane and I'm also gonna give access to Bob. If I realize I've made a mistake and I didn't actually want to select Bob, you just click across and that access will be removed. There is no save for this PLG settings page, so every time I make a change, a green success message appears at the top right to say that it's been updated. So then we're actually going to use this now to create our real PLG for Jane. So I tap on edit PLG items at the top right. And then what we've got then is we've got exactly the thing that we struck, set up as our template. So we can see the four areas of the ACB and we can see where we're going to add in all the information. So this is where I'm going to just hopefully you'll be able to see both at the same time. So on the, you should now be able to see a Word document on the right and the web console on the left. If that's not the case, if someone could unmute themselves and let me know, that'd be great. But if that is the case, just remain muted. So what we're then going to do is for Jane, this is the first long term target from the educational healthcare plan. I'm just going to right click on that and copy it. And I'm going to go back to the web console. So as I said before, to edit an item in the PLG, you just click the pencil icon on the right hand side. I'm going to leave the prefix of EHCP because I actually want that to appear in the PLG. I am just going to paste over the long term target. So we've now got Jane's long term target in the EHCP. As you saw in the template, I don't want to directly link evidence to that long term target. So I can just leave that as it is and click OK. Again, I'm just going to repeat that process now. So on the right hand side, I've got my short term outcome, the first one. Click the pencil icon on the left next to the item. And again, I'm just going to type over there. And again, if I didn't want to copy and paste, I could just use the keyboard now to type over this. But as I've already got it in a Word document, I can just paste it in. I am going to then put the month. So we're in November. And uh, it's 2021, so I'm just going to put 21, or let's actually go for 2021. Here. So it's the 11th month, 2021, and then I just click OK. And then I'm just going to repeat that process to add in some of the other short term outcomes. So again, pencil like onto the right of the item you want to edit, paste in the short term outcome, and in my template, I want to record the month and the year that it was set. And I just say, OK. So I'm not going to do all of this because obviously we've got limited time to be able to work through. But I will just do, I'll do the first section completely and you'd be able to just repeat the process, working your way down to do the others. You can also see if you want to, you can click to say, this is where I'm currently working and then click the pencil icon. Or so there, I'll click on it and I'll be able to click on the pencil. Or you can just hover over the item and press the pencil icon. So let's paste in the short term outcome here. And again, I'm just going to put the month and the year. So what's nice about the way I've chosen to set it up is even though I'm not directly linking evidence to this long term outcome, I have chosen the way it's structured. And this is all indented to the right by one level. But when I do link evidence to this short term outcome, it will make reference to this long term outcome. And over time, within the assessment book, I'll be able to keep track of all the evidence that is linked to each of the short term outcomes, as well as overall the evidence that was indirectly linked to this long term outcome. You would repeat the process, working your way down, adding in, the, in other sections. Just to give you some examples of what may take place, uh, if sometimes it's a bit fluid about how many short term targets there are, Say this learner's only got two targ short term targets within communication interaction, then I can just delete an icon item by pressing the delete icon just here. I just confirm I want to delete it and then, then I would enter in the two short term outcomes within communication and interaction. 
And again, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the learner's actually got four short-term outcomes. What we then do is click, click or tap the duplicate icon just here. It's like two pieces of paper on top of each other. And then I'd be able to enter in the four short-term outcomes for that learner if that was appropriate. So we've added in the framework items. I've built out the first section completely. The rest of it, when we look at the PLG, you'll still see it, it'll say things like enter LT here. If you're doing this for real, all your outcomes will be written in throughout the whole framework. You don't have to assess progress against individual items, but if you do, and we've already added MAP as an assessment system to, uh, to the cloud, and we've also restricted the schema to be used to using this template. So I am going to tap schema at the top and in the middle. And because it's been restricted, I'm then going to, as a school, I've chosen to assess progress against the short-term outcomes. I'm not going to assess progress against the long-term outcome, but you certainly can. So I'm just going to click choose schema. There is no choice, even though there's two schemas in my school, because we've restricted it so that no one can therefore make a mistake when they're picking it. So all I'm doing is clicking once where it says choose schema, and it automatically knows that in this PLG, because it's been used by the template that we've set up, it's restricted to only let the user pick map. At any point, I can go back to the framework items and continue to edit it. And again, that's where we've added the schema throughout. So I'll just check, I've gone through all the way. So you can see I've chosen not to assess physical and sensory, not assessing the long-term outcomes. In my example, I've just chosen to assess the short-term outcomes. But like there's no right or wrong way to structure a PLG, there's certainly also no right or wrong way to assess progress against it. So I'm going to go back to framework. So this is a secure website, uh, which has access to confidential information. So there is a timeout feature on there. So if I just didn't do anything now for 15 minutes, a pop-up would come up saying, I'm warning, you're going to be logged out if you continue not to say that you want to stay logged in. So if I was being called away from a desk or I was going off to a meeting, I could always click save at the bottom and that would save the work to where I've got to. So I'm just going to click save just so you can see that. The green success message would just pop up again. Uh, but then at any point, if you're just working through this in one go, I can then submit this PLG for review. So at the bottom right, I'm going to click submit for review. And then it's up to you. Uh, you don't have to put a reason. I could just click submit straight away. This could be creating a new PLG. I'm going to say creating a new EHCP outcomes because that's what I call them at my test school. So creating a new EHCP outcome. That's why I'm submitting this PLG. And I just click submit at the bottom right. I confirm I want to submit it for review by clicking review. So we're then taken to a screen where we can see any changes to the PLG are highlighted in red and everything will be highlighted in red because it's a brand new PLG. So everything's got new, all in red. The current version is completely blank because it's not a PLG that's ever been approved before. I can click on the proposed version, that's what we've just seen, and I can click on the reason so I can see, okay, well, who submitted this and what the reason was. So if I was an assessment user, I could do everything that I've just shown you, but an assessment user would not have the approve button at the bottom right to be able to approve those changes. So an assessment user then could go back to PLG Manager. Uh, probably when you're starting off the first time, I'd recommend an assessment user probably just creates one and then an assessment manager would come along and approve it to make sure that the teacher or the assessment user is structuring it in the right way before they start to make more of these. As I am an assessment manager, I do have an approve button at the bottom right. So I'm then going to click approve at the bottom right. And I then can click approve to confirm that I want to approve that PLG. A success message will be displayed saying that the changes to the PLG were approved successfully. And then I can click OK. So what we then just need to do is just set the framework and the assessment book to be live. So from this screen that we're already on, as soon as I click approve, the assessment manager or the owner of the PLG can then click settings at the top. I'm going to set the framework to be live. So I'll just click on the box. I also want the assessment book to be live. So again, click on the box and click live. Again, there's no save for this screen. So a green success message just updates that that's taken place. So we've Create, so far, what we've done in this workshop is we've created a template to be able to use to create a PLG. 
I've then created my very first PLG and approved those changes. So I, again, I could continue that process now to use the template that we created at the start to make more PLGs. What I'm now gonna do is swap, stop sharing the screen and go across to the iPad, where I can show you then how you can add the framework onto your device and also start linking evidence to it. And again, you may have a number of questions. We just have the, there's a few more minutes to go in terms of the demonstration and I'll take any questions from it. So my iPad's just coming up on your screen. This iPad has already been set up. So once I tap on the cog at the top left, it's already got an active subscription. It's already paired to my cloud. If I tap on learners, it's already got a number of learners, including Jane Patterson. What hasn't already got, because we've only literally just created it, was her EHCP outcomes or her PLG. So I tap on frameworks just here. These frameworks are already on my device. If you want to add a new framework to your device, you just tap the plus icon at the top right. I can then see this is the PLG that we've just created. So I tap on it and I just tap save at the top right. So that framework has now been added. I already had Jane on my device. So I can now go and capture some evidence for Jane. There's another whole workshop around capturing evidence and reviewing evidence. This is just gonna be a brief process showing you how to capture evidence. I'm gonna tap the plus to the right of learners. I'm gonna tap on all learners on this device and I'm gonna pick Jane. A tick appears to indicate she's been selected and I just tap done at the top right. What I can then do is I can add three photographs or three one minute videos. You can take it live or you can take it from the camera roll. As you can see, I'm not in a school setting. So I will take it from the camera roll. And this example, I'll just use this stock photo. I can then add a comment to that piece of evidence. So I tap the plus to the right of comments, tap the magnifying glass. I've not added those on my device. So I'm just going to actually write test just for now and just tap. The bit I really wanted to get to, and I would always recommend that once you do create a PLG, especially at the beginning, that you add it onto a device just to check it's going to work the way you intended it did once you capture evidence. So it's always a good practice to do. So I tap the plus to the right of frameworks. I click add links to a framework, and then I pick the framework that I want to use. In this case, it's James. All frameworks, when you open them up, you have choices that you can collapse the framework down. And then I could always go into a particular section if that's what I wanted to do, or I can expand it and I can see the whole framework. Again, I've only really built out the top head section just to save time today, but I can clearly see the long-term outcome. And what's really nice about this, schools find it really useful that everyone who's capturing evidence on a daily basis is reminded of what the long-term objective is for this learner in relation to cognition and learning. Again, you could have chose to be able to link evidence to this if that's what you want to do, in this example, I've not, so I can tap on any of the short-term outcomes to be able to link evidence directly to that short-term outcome. And then I just tap done at the top right. Just to be clear, you can also select numerous items as well. So I'm just going to say done for now though. And again, if I wanted to, I could also link this piece of evidence to another framework by just tapping on the pencil icon and picking a different framework, such as AET Autism or Development Matters or any curriculum framework. But what I want to focus on more about is now I want to show you the framework links here. So I can clearly see it's been linked to Jane Patterson EHCP outcomes. So it's the name of the PLG. It's clearly been linked to cognition and learning. And this is why it's then showing that indirectly, it's showing the long-term outcome from the EHCP that this short-term outcome is working towards. And I can see that it's been linked to the short-term outcome there. I'm not going to focus on tags or indicators today. Again, there's further uh, EFL online workshop that focuses more on tags. I'm going to turn this piece of evidence from orange to green. If you turn it to green and then press save, that piece of evidence will be automatically uploaded to the cloud and you'll be able to locate it on your device. So I'm just going to log into the assessment area at the bottom right. This is the one we've made today. If you're an assessment manager, you can click show all, see all the assessment books in the system. If you're an assessment user, I would only see the assessment books that I've got specific permission to be able to see. So I can then tap in to the assessment book for Jane. 
we can see the one piece of evidence that I've just gathered. I can see there's a number one there. As you saw in the video, more importantly, I can tap in it and over time be able to see progress and all the inputs from the whole team who are working with Jane across the school and at home and in the community. Again, we're not going to focus on baselines at the moment, but just to show you that therefore you would now be able to uh, baseline and learn if you want to or make assessment judgments. We can just see the continuum by topping, tapping the dotted line on the right. And this is where I could make an assessment continuum for this, sorry, assessment judgment for this learner using MAP in this example. Obviously, you don't need to assess progress in your PLGs at any point. Assessment books are really useful to see all the framework items and all the evidence. But if you do want to assess progress, you could use something like MAP, or you could use a continuum such as emerging, developing, secure, generalized, or any continuum that you're already using and is common language with your learners and families. Just before we get to the question and answer, I'm just gonna stop sharing the screen there. The only bit I just also wanted to show you is just where you can see the assessment books on the web console. So go to share some screen again. So we're back into the web console. There is a further workshop around capturing evidence that shows you how to capture evidence using the web console. If I click on assessment books, put a little torch on so you can see a bit more clearly. Click on assessment books from the top menu. Again, assessment users would automatically see the ones they've got permission for. Assessment managers can click show all. If I go into the assessment book for Jane, again, I can see all the framework items down the left. I can see how much evidence has been gathered. I can click on it to be able to see it in more detail. And at any point, you can use the web console to make baseline judgments as well as make more review judgments or assess progress over time. So I'm just going to stop sharing the screen there. back to get this up for us. Where is that? So I really do appreciate that was quite a lot for me to try and fit in this EFL online workshop and a number of you may have questions so by all means it's a good opportunity if you have to unmute yourself and ask. So hopefully, uh, again, give one more chance if anyone has got any questions, and more than willing to try and answer them for you. I'm really, uh, hopefully that EFL online workshop's been really useful for you. Uh, if you do have any questions at any point, you can always contact us using services at theteachercloud.net. So that's services at theteachercloud.net. The recording of this session will be made available, and it will be posted on the page where you actually registered for the event. So any of the EFL online workshops that are coming up, do look out for further dates, and further workshops that will be added. Encourage any of your colleagues to also join. But again, the recordings will be made available there within a week of the uh, workshop taking place. So a week today, the, this workshop we post on that line. And therefore you'll be able to hopefully, it will help you as you create your PLG template and start to create some PLGs too. And again, just to be clear, as hopefully I've made clear in the workshop, there is no right or wrong way to structure a PLG, a personal learning goal on evidence for learning. All schools structure them in different ways. And just on that, I always think it's quite useful with evidence for learning to start and build up the use of it. So if you are thinking of creating a template and creating some PLGs, I would recommend you make a handful of PLGs and get some members of staff to test them first before, if you're going to end up making 50 or 100 PLGs for your learners, it's always good to start small, check that's the way you want to structure it, and your PLG template structured in the best sort of way, and then you can build out from it. So hopefully this EFL online workshop has been useful. Uh, thank you all for attending, and hopefully you can join a future EFL online workshop uh, coming up. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you joining.